What is good, YouTube nights? This is your man, Steve. Welcome to Lords of the Long Box for a quick movie review of Ip Man, the finale. Yes, this is the fourth and final installment of the Ip Man franchise, starring the one and only Donnie Yen, directed by Wilson Yip. This is the final installment of the story of Bruce Lee's teacher and real life figure, Ip Man. I was able to see it in a theater, and uh, if I were to stack it up against the other three, Ip Man 1, 2, and 3, this would be probably the fourth one that uh, of the four that uh, that I liked. Um, it started going downhill with Ip Man 3. When they started catering to Western audiences and they brought in Mike Tyson, if you remember that one, uh, this one def takes place in America. There's a lot of um, there's a lot of English speaking actors in it, uh, most namely Scott Adkins, who does a lot of martial arts films. He was actually in Doctor Strange. He was one of the henchmen uh, that went after Doctor Strange. Uh, so he's a great real life martial artist, and we all know Donnie Yen is a great martial artist. Uh, the fight choreography was done by none other than Yun Wu Ping. Uh, the fight choreography done, uh, master fight choreographer that did the Matrix films as well as Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. So he has a storied, um, illustrious career. He's a little bit, a bit old. Um, the story takes place of Ip Man in his, uh, the later stages of his life. Uh, so this, there's some weird plot threads where his son is now a teenager. He's having problems in school. So they're like, hey, let's go to America so we get you right. In order for his kid to get into an American school, he needs to get a letter from the Chinatown Association, which is already out to get him because if you follow the story of Bruce Lee, you know when Bruce first opened up his uh, Kung Fu Academies in San Francisco in Chinatown, the Chinese uh, grandmasters there frowned upon him teaching Kung Fu to non-Chinese students. And th so that thread is loosely played by, and there's an actor that does a great job of playing Bruce Lee, by the way. He's a little bit older to be playing Bruce Lee because this takes place in the mid sixties. Bruce Lee would have been in his uh, mid twenties. I do believe at that time, uh, Bruce Lee died when he was 32 in 1973. So rad. So it's kind of odd. This guy actor is a little bit old, but he, he does a great, great Bruce Lee impersonation. I do believe he was in a, uh, Chinese TV series based on the life of Bruce Lee. So he was the guy that played the goalie in Shaolin Soccer. Remember him who kind of played Bruce Lee, uh, if you remember that. Uh, so that was interesting. Um, like I said, some of the dialogue given to the people speaking, uh, non-speaking Chinese is cringeworthy. It's, it's I, I don't know what the director was thinking, Wilson Yip, who directed the first three installments, but it was cheesy at times and laugh, we laughed out loud in the theater. Uh, even though, I mean, there's a lot of Chinese speaking people there. Uh, most half the film was in Cantonese, half the film was in Mandarin. Most of the people in this country now who are Chinese speak Mandarin. If you grew up in Hong Kong, you spoke Cantonese. Most Hong Kong films that came out prior to China taking back over control from the British were spoke were uh, done in Cantonese. So a lot of times you'll see a Chinese movie with subtitles at the bottom that look to be Chinese. That's because it's another dialect, either Mandarin or Cantonese. Anywho, I was a bit disappointed. Um, the fight choreography was okay. Um, it, but now martial arts films such as The Raid Redemption and Ung Bak, the, the, the fight choreography has been taken to a next level. And this one, it was kind of, it was okay. I mean, it was better than most Western films as far as fight choreography. Uh, but I think you, Yun Wu Ping missed a chance to really shine here. Donnie Yen does an awesome job showing off Wing Chun, which is the brand of Kung Fu that, uh, Yip Man taught. Bruce Lee took Wing Chun and he made Jeet Kune Do out of it and kind of, his whole thing was, I don't like forms. And they talked about it briefly in here. And there's a bigger kind of social uh, story here as well about how um, there's a whole thread with INS, with the, this, the, one of the t grandmaster's daughters in Chinatown beat up a white girl in San Francisco. So they called her father, who just happens to be an INS agent. And they want to deport all the Chinese and the Chinese are saying there's basically a metaphor about, hey, we're that, you know, why aren't we ever treated right when we've been here since the 1800s building your railroads for you? So there's a little message in there. But ultimately, it's a story about um, karate and how the, the U.S. military, mainly Marines, use karate as a method of hand-to-hand -hand combat. One of, the one of the Marines is a student of Wing Chun who says that, you know, we should incorporate Wing Chun into our hand-to-hand -hand combat. And it kind of takes into the whole motif of what Bruce Lee said, that there shouldn't be just one martial art. You should learn multiple martial arts, grappling, 
kicking, kickboxing, uh, jiu-jitsu, ground game, everything, right? That's what modern mixed martial arts is. So Wing Chun is just kind of one part of it. There's a Tai Chi master. But I think that's what they were trying to say. I know Donnie Yen in real life practices uh, mixed martial arts. If you watch his movie Flashpoint, he incorporated a lot of mixed martial arts into his fight choreography. Bruce Lee famously found out, was taught by Judo Jean LaBelle that when he found out that his ground game was weak and Judo Jean LaBelle was a world-renowned grappler, a black belt in Judo, taught Bruce Lee uh, basically basic grappling and holds in Judo. And now in modern MMA is Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. So I see what they try to do but didn't quite flesh it out. But ultimately, it's a story about Ip Man um, showing that Wing Chun is comparable to... Uh, Japanese karate. If you remember, if you watch Ip Man 1, it basically took place during World War II, during the occupation of China by the Japanese foreign invaders. And that's when you, he goes into a dojo and he basically fights the entire dojo uh, using Chinese Wing Chun. Bruce Lee did that in the Chinese Connection, or if you want to call it Fist of Fury. But this movie, um, if, if, if they didn't cater to Western audiences, I think it would have been better, like Ip Man and 1 and 2. But you know, with popularity and they want Hollywood, uh, per, they want a Hollywood release. And in the U.S., I guess they have to put more American actors or Americans or English speaking actors in it. And to me, I think that was the downfall of it because some of the dialogue is cheesy. Uh, the plot points I can deal with are being thin because ultimately it's a martial arts movie. But Ip Man and One Two had great plot, great story. There was, uh, you know, a romantic interest in and things. And I think this one was just kind of. Um, it was lackluster. Uh, if you want to go for some good martial arts uh, fighting choreography, then go. It's it's better than most stuff you see in the in main, in the Western uh, cinema. Uh, but as far as classic Chinese kung fu movies, I, this uh, this isn't it for me, man. So unfortunately, um, it doesn't quite live up to Ip Man one and two, but it's still better than I guess most of the stuff you get in uh, American or Western movies as far as martial arts movies are. So. There's that. So till next time, boys and girls, happy new year and keep digging in them long boxes. Peace out.